Hi, today I would like you to meet Bo. Bo is a pet fly. Bo is in fact a digital fly and he lives inside Commodore 64. Now, you know those kind of um, children book series with the same character that experience different situations and go through different adventures? You know those kind of learning stories for younger children? Well, this is exactly what I would like to do with Bo. So today I would like to put Bo in several different situations and adventures and of course inside his own environment where he lives and we will see what will happen, uh, what would Bo do. Let's begin. A little snippet of chords. Entered. That's right. So here it is. This is a uh, bow, uh, the fly that lives inside the uh, Commodore Basic. Uh, as you see, uh, he's flying happily uh, through this uh, uh, forest made of uh, Petsky characters. Um, and these uh, Petsky characters are in fact the code that makes bow fly. Let me switch to our next scenario. Uh, scenario number two. Here we have a bow playing with the friend, um, flying happily through this forest of pesky characters, having a fun time together. That's all. Okay, in this next scenario. Let me enter this code and let me list it. And let me um, prepare the playground for Bo. And then I will explain everything. So what I'm going to do is delete some of these characters. Okay, this should be just enough. Okay, <clears throat> let me run the code. So as you can see, I'm afraid that the uh, bow is lost. And uh, he's also tired, so he cannot fly over these characters. So I'm afraid that he will have to find his way out of this forest um, by flying low and try to avoid trees. Yeah, it's not doing well so far. It's almost free. Come on. No, don't go back. Yeah, yes, yeah. <laughs> he made it. <laughs> oh, great. Okay, next scenario. So let me enter the code. Let me list one more time so that we have nice playground. So what happened here is that um, uh, Bo receives some crayons and of course uh, he's very happy about that so what he will do is um, uh, fly into the forest and color every character inside with some nice lovely colors you know just sharing happiness with everybody making a happy forest so here it is flying around coloring these petsky characters. Okay, in this next scenario, let me enter the new code. Oh no, let me just list a couple of times so that we have nice playground. Um, 
what happens in this scenario is that um, um, Bo gets hung hungry, right? So he needs to eat something. So he eats characters. Why not? So here we go. He's going like crazy eating everything. Very nice. Next scenario. I'm afraid that um, Bo is so hungry that he will not eat only the characters, he will eat everything on the complete screen. The whole forest will be gone once he's finished. Look at them go. Hmm. Okay, now in this scenario, Bo went completely mad, so he is destroying and coloring everything. So I mean, once he he's done, there will be no more forest. Yeah, going crazy, completely, and producing this kind of funny tiles. Yeah, so this is Bo, and uh, the whole point of this uh, different uh, scenarios and different stories uh, with Bo is just to show you um, uh, what can be done uh, with almost exactly the same code, uh, running the same commands. With just a little bit of tweaking, uh, you get different uh, behavior, different results. Um, and once you have the core of your program then it's uh, actually fun and easy to play around with it and, uh, and tweak it and change it and see how it behaves uh, differently so it's time to get into the code okay so this is our code this is Bo. <laughs> And this is the simplest uh, version uh, where Bo eat, eats characters on the screen. So essentially just these two lines of code uh, are doing all the work. Uh, this first line is just initializing some parameters and variables. Uh, and we execute this only once. Okay, uh, let me break this a little bit and so it will uh, be much easier to explain what is going on here okay so this first line we set up x parameter at some random position plus 300 so something somewhere in the almost not middle of the screen but the first first middle of the screen this is um, these uh, values can be modified depending on where you want to um, first appearing to happen. So we have second um, x value, uh, x2, uh, that we uh, set uh, to be equal to x. We have position of screen memory, uh, first, first um, memory address, and we have some additional variable s equals zero. Now, what we do here in this next line is, let me break this as well. So, we um, generate some random number. And in this configuration, we can generate four numbers. Zero, one, two, or three. Or three. Okay. So, we have uh, four different numbers. And depending on that four different numbers, we generate this variable s. Now, this variable s uses the, this technique that um, instead of using a couple of if, if, then, if, then, if, then, uh, we use this technique that I explained in some previous videos. And um, the options, the, the possibilities that we can have here is that s becomes equal to 1 or s becomes equal to minus 1 
and then s can become equals 40 or s can become equal minus 40. So what are these numbers? So what we use to, to move um, bow on the screen is a poke command. So we are poking at the memory locations. So if s is equal to 1, that is 1 uh, memory address plus. So that means the move, bow is moving right. If his, uh, s is uh, minus 1, that means that is moving left. So, and if we want to have a up movement and down movement, uh, we need to go uh, minus or plus 40 to skip whole row and go above it or go below it. So this is why we have this 40 and minus 40. So this is in fact uh, plus 40 and this is plus 1, if you can look at that way. Okay, next line. Next line uh, is doing a couple of things. So I will break this as well. Uh, okay. First section is incrementing x value. So x value is a position of uh, uh, of ball position. So where where is a pet fly is located on the screen. So and as you can see, we are using that variable x uh, plus location first location on screen memory, and we are actually just poking um, um, ASCII value thirty four petsky value thirty four. Uh, which is a quote, a sign for a quote, that kind of represents a fly. Okay, so how this um, x is incrementing? Um, because again, we're using this technique that make, uh, that um, enables us to, at the same time, we are incrementing x, and also we are taking care that x is not going over the screen, so because if we use this, um, we, if we keep adding or, or um, uh, decrementing uh, s uh, from uh, x value, we can end up uh, out of the screen and we can cause um, a lot of trouble poking around in memory locations that we are not in control. So <clears throat> this is a way that we are checking if x plus s, okay, so current x position plus whatever we want to do next either to move right left up and down is uh, bigger than zero so we are not going uh, over the screen on, to on the top side and in the same time we are not if we uh, that uh, add that same parameters we are staying in the screen we are not going below the, the screen memory in that case, we, we multiply everything by s. Now, if all this is um, all this is true, this will become minus one. Okay, if minus one uh, multiplied by s will become minus s, right? And together with this minus will be become plus s. Okay. So in case that this is not true. Okay, so in case that this is false, so perhaps we are at some position uh, on the bottom, somewhere near the bottom, and we want to, uh, our S is um, plus 40, so we are going whole row below the screen, so this whole thing will become zero, because it will not be um, true. Uh, so it will become zero, uh, multiplied by s will become zero, and we are getting this, so x will remain x, there will be no changes. Okay, so <clears throat> once we have our new x position, what we do is uh, we are um, printing or poking pet's key value 32 uh, at the old position, so at x position so that's key value 32 is a space so we are actually deleting um, 
whatever is uh, current position and then we switch to new position and uh, poking a pet ski value 34 which is our um, quotes uh, so this is our fly and then um, we uh, set x2 to be current well new x position and we are preparing this way we preparing this x2 variable uh, for the next cycle and then we simply jump this is a shortcut for go to 20 we are jumping to line 20 and again we are generating a random number from 0 to 3 and going through all this process over and over again okay so this is it this is the whole um, program now usually um, in almost all these examples uh, in today's video i keep this line 20 um, always the same uh, and the only thing that i change uh, is this um, se uh, section here so the way that i want the bow uh, behaves on the screen is uh, purely dependent on this line 50 right so uh, usually this uh, let me bring this back uh, okay so this line always same stays the same um, because i want to keep everything in the in the screen this is essential and then this mm, here is uh, tweaked so that we instead of um, printing space uh, poking space in the old x position or x2 uh, we can poke um, um, invert space so that would look like the, we are eating the whole screen instead of just eating the character or I can uh, do um, something like this. So let's say that I want to, to fly over the, the, the character. So that means that I need to uh, remember um, what character that I uh, destroyed by placing uh, Mo at X position. So this piece of the code is a scenario where Bo is flying over, over the characters, right? So again, we have um, almost same situation, except um, I uh, add additional variable Z uh, and I, this is a peak, sorry. So this is a peak, so we uh, store um, into z variable um whatever is uh, currently um positioned at uh, l plus x so x is a random <coughs> random position that we set up at the beginning l is 1024 okay so it's 124 plus x and we store that okay so this here is exactly like in previous line, uh, previous example. This here, let me break this again. Um, this here is, is exactly the same. Nothing changed there. This is poke. This is peak. Okay. This is poke. And this here is exactly like, like in previous. So what is different here is that we um, we are not uh, poking uh, space at the position all position we are poking uh, variable z so um, value from variable z and this uh, value is uh, initially uh, stored here okay and then <clears throat> what we do before we place our little fly on the x position on a new position. Uh, we are storing this uh, current value, whatever it is, so that we can restore it in the next cycle. This gives you a fact that he is actually flying over the over the character. Okay, you can see the little bit of flickering and everything, but you know, hmm, that's basic. <laughs> um, so this is it. So how about coloring? We can do the same thing and then... Um, um, add some variable for coloring so for example what we need to do is um, color memory position 
so we need that uh, of course we um, we need here say that we want some random <coughs> random color and let's call it um, uh, G so we need integer and the uh, multiply 14 so we have 14 colors and of course what oh, okay okay I'm writing it let me break this so what we want to do um, because we want to color uh, the characters not delete them and if we uh, color the character with the same color of the background then we have a fact of deleting the character not coloring it so we have to exclude one color and that's that's the background color at the moment i'm assuming that it's default color it's blue so what we need to do here is says uh, g equals to g plus let's say and then g equals to six so if g is equal to six uh, we multiply that by one add some uh bracket oh, okay now it makes more, more sense we generated a random number from um, 0 to 13 do we need plus one okay uh we need that plus one we need uh, numbers from 1 to 14 okay once we got that we are going to check uh, is G um, number 6 which is a color blue in case that it is we are going to well, we can decide are we going to go to next color so we're going to add one or we're going to decrement one um, whatever we want to do so let me see in this case I would like to add one so if this is true this will become minus one minus one multiplied by one is minus one and minus and minus give us plus so in case that we get uh color number six uh we are going to actually um just switch it to plus one and it it will become seven and then of course um because we are flying over the characters and coloring so once we restore the character we are going to color it right so before this here we're going to add one more uh, command and said oak c plus x2 so we are coloring the, this restored character and value g this is it now instead of uh, flying over the characters it, okay still flying over the characters but also coloring them and this will give you a fact that it's actually doing something differently than just flying over the characters let me show you how Abo avoid characters this is also a good example so basically we have uh, same thing up to here everything is uh, everything is the same so we are picking current new position to, so before we poke bow at that position we are going to check whether this position is uh, taken or free so is it any character there or it's free so we are going to check that here so if z is equal to 32 so it's empty empty um, it's space so it's free then we do moving um, our bow from the current position to the new position deleting the old position and then uh, just go to 20 go to 20 if this is not the true then we just um, says okay because we changed the x here we want to restore it back we didn't move anywhere because we are um, obviously want to go somewhere where it's already taken by some other character so we are just restoring x to the old position that is x2 and we jump jumping to line 20 okay so this is it for today i really hope that you enjoyed this little adventure with Bo, and perhaps you learned something along the way so if you did uh, you can leave a comment down below uh, you can subscribe you can like and until next time goodbye